Welcome to part two of creating a uh, AI controller using the nav mesh. <clears throat> Today we're actually going to be hooking up the animations that are connected to this guy right here. And we hooked up the animator in the last tutorial, and this time we're actually going to be putting it to use. And we're going to be writing its own, the character's own kind of state things for when the when it sees the player or not sees the player when it it's running when the character's running it's going to switch to the run animation and stuff like that uh, it's just basic stuff that i do uh, other people that might be a bit more advanced at this than i would you might have a better way than the way that i do it so if you do or you know of a better way than doing it than what i do please let me know uh, because i'm always looking to shorten down uh, ways of doing things so let me know if there is a better way of doing it or uh, and we can talk and um, so we're actually going to be probably spending a good bit of time in visual studio on this one and um, just trying to think what we need off the top of my head so i'm just going to put a header here and nav mesh settings slash target and uh, and then we're going to use this other header. Mesh. So you can just follow along what I'm doing now and I'll explain. walking running current state m underscore current state so we're going to be using that for checking our current states for switching and things like that um i think off the top of my head that's all we're going to be using for the minute and what I generally like to do is a private. Just trying to think if there's a better way than what I've done it before for calling the animations. Probably just do a private. Jeez, I can't spell today. Private. Private void. Animation. Checker. See if this works. So if uh, m underscore current state equals equals current state dot idle, then we're going to be doing code here. Else if else if walking and okay so what I've done so far is I've included this variable for the animator and this is how we're going to be changing our animation states and accessing the parameters and um, I introduced an enum because this is just the way I personally like to do it for checking things so anytime we change the enum state it will change the animation state and that's the way we will do it and um, then this whole private void here for checking the animations is, is going to be checking what state it's doing currently and then depend on the state it's going to change the animation and you could put this in the void update but I like to kind of keep things in its own um, in its own uh, method because it just it's neater to read then and I, I just add it to the void update like that <coughs> uh, but down the line we might change where this uh, gets updated so in the idle we're going to be 
doing m underscore animator dot set bool and this uses uh, I think I can show you. it uses a two parameter so it uses an id and then the bool value so the id is like so and we're going to do is walking it needs to be set to false and this is cap sensitive so i'm just going to check this so if i go to my animator is walking is there um, so i'm just going to copy that just to double check so and it's spelled the exact same so we're setting that to false so in order to go back to idle all the things need to be set to false so is running needs to be set to false too and that way we can switch back now to go to walking is running needs to be false is walking needs to be true and then vice versa for running and that is everything set up for running for idle walking and running then we can update our state in actual game uh, for the second I'm just going to comment out this to show that to check that it, this is actually working so let's come back here go to my AI controller it's looking for the animator and then you can see here that we have this current state so I'm just going to move the camera a little bit closer to this guy and press play so, this thing with the leg I'm not sure what's going on Switch to sorry, switch to walking, running, back to walking or idle. I'm not sure what that stretch is. So if I just play the regular idle animation. Does it? Okay. I'm not gonna spend this video trying to figure out what this problem is. But I think it just needs to. Ooh, excuse me. Re import the animation. Okay, so that is checking. That is changing our states of the actual AI controller. So now depending if he's walking, running or whatever the hell he's doing, it will always change this. And then in our code, in our code, in our code, we will just have to write the changes for this at any given point. So a good example of this would be uh, an I enumerator and we'll just call it test switch uh, and we will do this is, uh, yield return new wait for seconds and we'll just do two seconds and then we'll do m underscore current state equals state dot and we'll go to running then <clears throat> so this in the void star, start quarantine, and that will basically start the enumerator. So click play, wait two seconds, and this switch is running. Now, the one thing I noticed is that running animation is quite uh, snappy. So I'm just turn this off here really quickly. So the run animation is snapping. Yeah, it's very, very um, violent looking. I thought that would have updated in there, never mind. Uh, down here in the preview window, you can kind of see it. Just about here and then it just snaps 
so you can just drag that out a tiny bit to make it a little bit smoother and then it goes from idle to running pretty quickly so that's that's pretty that, that's good enough so you can tweak around with them to get the perfect transition between animations but I'm not gonna spend too much time with that um, so that is the perfect test for actually hooking up the animations and that is all we are going to be doing this video so that was that's how I generally hook up the animations for when I do an AI controller like this um, and as you can see like it's not it's not that advanced yet but next time we're going to be adding a ray cast checker and stuff like that into the actual game and we're going to be playing around with more pathfinding so that will be in the next tutorial thanks for watching guys please rate comment and subscribe and i will talk to you soon adios